Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Tuba Player Negative AE, and welcome to another episode of Steins Gate. Uh, today, we're picking up right where we left off, um, kind of in the past, where we've been switching around people a lot, and we went back to the past where me, I met me at Maori, and I'm about to walk in on Daru and y and Yuki. I don't know. It was probably materials for one of her costumes. Hey, hey, were you just talking to someone? Huh? Oh, um, that was a friend from my class at college. I see. So are you going to meet them today, too? No, I don't have any plans for today. Are you going to work, Mayori? Nope. I'm meeting Yuki at the lab. Was this good timing or bad timing? I know. Why don't you come with me? It's been so long, and you'll get to eat Yuki's home cooking. And maybe she's gonna try hard to make something too. Uh, what about it? Obviously, I say yes. Oh, they brought back the old art. Oh, this. In the end, I went with her. <laughs> you look really happy. <laughs> yep, I am happy. Mayor had been smiling the whole time. But I was the opposite. The minute I got here, I was so nervous I felt like I was about to throw up. Didn't really want to see Suzuha. Huh? Oh, hmm. you okay, Okabe? Tenoji. Oh. Yeah. Am I about to see Tenoji? Oh, it looks exactly the same. Ah, oh, they didn't change him one bit. It's exactly the same. The door to the Bronte workshop on the first floor opened, and out came the building's owner, Yugo Tenoji. The guy who was. I don't know, man. This guy. He looks exactly the same, but he's part of that one terrorist group. Oh. Hey there. Wow. Aren't you cold in just a t-shirt? Hmm. I'm pretty tough. Hmm. When I'd been living in the lab, I'd given him the nickname Mr. Braun. Been a long time since I'd seen him. Okay. From the look of it, you're actually making something, uh, or you're actually making something of yourself at college. Thanks. Come to think of it, how were we handling the rent? I asked Mayori instead of him. I used to give it directly to Tenoji, but. Um, Hashi does deposit the money when it's due. Don't worry. So, this guy. I see. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this man was a rounder, in, or was he a rounder in this world line too? <whistles> Probably. Hey, we got a message. What do we got? How did things with Kudasu go with Kudasu after that? Can we do something about her mouth? I want Maho. I want to talk to Maho too. <laughs> I want to talk to Maho too. Huh? What? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> Why do I have my own emote? Don't say that. Let me switch between the two of them. Not happening. Not for you. Why does Suzuha have an emote? Sorry, it was a joke. Why do we all have emotes? It's still, like, flabbergasts me. I want my own emote. I didn't think you'd get so mad. If I knew your electronic double could be... If you knew your electronic double could be spilling secrets about your private life and you'd have no clue, it'd freak you out too. I mean, I know it shouldn't happen, but that doesn't mean it won't. You're right. 
So, can you let me switch between them? <laughs> uh, that's funny. That whole convers- like, what happens if I would have chose something else? Jesus, that whole conversation was about that. There is no way I could ask him. I couldn't help but be wary of him. That's why I started to put some distance between us. If nothing else, I avoided trying to interact with him. I know. Don't cause too much trouble. Tenoji saw that I had gone silent and went back inside. Mary looked over at me with a worried expression. You okay? You sure you don't want to go home? Let's go. I mean, we're already freaking here. I'd be pissed if I went home. Tenoji didn't matter. What mattered was... Why was I here? Did I feel like something needed to change? Or did I really want to show Kudasu the lab? I went up the stairs, still unsure of the answer. I kinda wonder something. You know what I kinda wonder? Is... Okay, I'm not gonna say anything. Maybe I'll say it at the end of the episode. Sorry, Yuki, I'm a little late. Hey there, Mayori. I peeked inside the room. Dara and Yuki were there. Their eyes went wide when they saw me. Oh, I see Okabe's with you. Oh, Okabe. It's been forever, man. Oh, yeah. It has. I quickly scanned the room. There was no sign of Suzuha. Part of me was a little relieved. But we know the Suzuha is in the room. Can I come in? It's your own lab, dude. Don't ask that. That's true, I guess. I don't think I can call Kudasu right now. I followed Mayori to the lab and tried to relax my legs by sitting on the couch, but I didn't feel relaxed at all. It felt like my skin was crawling. I glanced over at Yuki. That outfit's so cute, Yuki. I wore it because I wanted to hear you say that. That's so nice. Maybe she wants to wear it too. You want to switch outfits later? Would I be the right size? I heard about Yuki's future from Suzuha too. I still couldn't believe someone in this this pretty was going to still marry Dara. <sighs> All right, let's call, let's connect. Nanda. What the? I figured you would have reached the lab by now. I ran into the development room. <laughs> Suzu is here, in the back, clutching my smartphone. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I ran into the bank. You've got a lot of free time, don't you? Why are you lowering your voice? Do you not want your friends to know about me? Of course not. I hadn't checked with Do Maho and Dr. Leskinen if it was okay to tell other people about Amadeus. Well, that's fine. I can figure out what's going on. Kudasu lowered her voice as well. Just give me a little look around the room. All you have to do is hold the camera up. Sheesh. I sighed and held the smartphone up to my chest. I spun around once like I was taking a video with my camera. Oh no. Hmm. Filthy. That's your first impression? Sorry. I'll try that again. It's full of junk. <laughs> that wasn't much better. Well, it was true. 
I know labs are never clean, but this is especially bad. It's about as bad as Maho's hotel room. It's okay to share her private information like that. You should tell her to clean her room too. She'd bite my head off if I did that. <laughs> but still. Kudasu paused and smiled. I always kind of wanted to have a shared room like this. Suza has totally in here though. It must be pretty nice if there are all these people here. Kudasu. Yeah, Kudasu in the Alpha World line, you said the same thing. You really. Uncle, who are you talking to? Hi, Suzuha. I suddenly heard a girl's voice from under the desk, and I was so surprised I screamed. Oh, who's there? Shh, be, be quiet. Huh? <laughs> that is the opposite of being quiet. She was hiding. Was she hiding? But why? <laughs> Daru, Maori, and Yuki heard me scream and ran over to see what the problem was. Okari, okay, what's wrong? Huh? Is that Suzuha? Uh, oh. Suzuha looked upset. It was only then I realized who she was hiding from. Oh jeez. And now for our next story. Nope. A member of the Dian's House of Representatives held a press conference today at 10 a.m. to announce his resignation after accepting legal, illegal donations from corporations. Komazawa. Yasu Yasukazu Komazawa. I hope that's not a name I have to remember. So when I left the TV on and it was playing the afternoon news. Suzuha knew, knew what no one was watching it, but she used the remote to turn the volume up anyway. She wanted to keep the girls in the shower room from hearing us. I could hear Maori and Yuki laughing from the shower. Wait, they're showering together? What the f Who does that? Things had gotten really awkward when Yuki had found Suzuha, but Mary quickly came up with a plan. At first, her plan was for the three of them, including Suzuha, to shower naked together and hopefully get Yuki and Suzuha more comfortable around each other. Is that a thing that happens? I know I don't. I don't. I know I don't like talk to my dude friends. <laughs> like, hey, dude, let's shower together. Get to know each other a little bit more. Be comfortable. What? That doesn't happen. But Susan, unless, unless things are different in Japan, but that does not happen over here. But Suzuha said that the shower room was too small for three people and refused. It's all right for two people. Though. Well, this is a problem. Suzu was staring up at the ceiling. It's not your fault, Suzuha. It's Okadine's. It's your fault for not telling me about her earlier. There wasn't time. And anyway, you were mumbling to your, into your smartphone back there. What were you doing? I was... Well... You were talking to somebody, weren't you? I got this new app, and I was trying it out. Oh, a girl game one? So you've gotten into those, huh? I can give you my list of recommended apps later then. Uh, 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 th th thanks. I guess I'd managed to fool them about Amadeus. Anyway, it was my screw up. Sorry for scaring you. 
そもそも。We didn't need to hide from her anyway. すでに、誰の妹で通っているんだから。You already told her your daughter's sister. Hiding just makes you look more suspicious. Susan had tried to avoid Yuki to begin with. Just meeting her father was enough to potentially cause the time paradox, she said. And that chance went up even more if she met her mother. But Yuki had found her before long, and Susan had been forced to say she was Dara's little sister. Yuki believed it, so that's why. So why make things any more complicated? Sure, Mom wants to become friends with me more than I thought she would. If I talk to her too much, I might slip up. Sure, well,、uh, yeah, I understand. If you see someone who's just like you, you either hate them or take an interest in them, I bet. And Yuki Amane was the latter. It'd be much easier if she hated me. You could just tell her. Maybe not. Right now, only a few people knew that Suzuha was a time traveler. Me, Daru, Maori, and Ferris. That was all. Why not? Why not tell her? I mean, that's a lot of information, I guess, to. to take in. Wait, do you have to explain anything at all? Huh? Amaneshi isn't the type to pry. You should know that, right, Susan? You're right. She wasn't like that in the future. Then what's the problem? When the time comes, I'll explain it to her. Really? Yeah. Fine. I'll leave it to you. Susan nodded. So from now on, you can stop trying to avoid Am Amaneshi. I don't know if I can do that without screwing up. It'll be fine. I feel like. I don't know if you're one to talk, though. I feel like Daru sounds more like Barney in this game. Because before he was kind of cool, now he's just. Now he's just all the time dopey. Look at how awkward you just were with her. I'm not the problem here. And the conversation came to a halt, which meant we we started talking about the voices coming from the shower room. What? And so. Dara opened his mouth. Perhaps he couldn't take it anymore. Can I go watch Nico live streaming? There's a blood tune stream. What the fuck is going on? What is this? Fictional.、Uh, live streaming service offered by the major streaming site Nico Nya Video. Okay. Blood tune. The anime. An anime called Blood Tune, the animation, originally a manga, was animated last year. That showed you a lot of attention from anime fans,、uh, and the main heroine Sierra Orgel became popular to have many figures. Blood Tune. You're gonna do it even if I tell you no, right? Yep. Then go ahead. She's at her side, and Daru sat in front of the PC and put his headphones on. <laughs> What is it, Uncle? Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about how well you got along with your dad. Really? Yeah. Daru was like this in the future, wasn't he? He was thinner and cooler. I can't even imagine. <laughs> And the conversation died again. There were a ton of things I needed to talk to Suzuha about, but that wasn't why I couldn't say a word. Maybe it was the same for her. Since there was nothing else to do, Suzuha and I turned back on the TV or turned back to the TV. The news was still on. The opening event for the French fashion brand Le Paradis was holding Ginza. Er, 
I've I've heard that pronounced before. Jinz, Jinza? I don't know. The newscaster spoke. I could see a hundred women lined up in front of a store. It's so peaceful, isn't it? By the time I was old enough to remember anything, this was all gone. On the TV, a pretty a girl in a pretty outfit was talking to an interviewer. I'm jealous. They don't have to kill anyone. There's nobody going to kill them. In the world I grew up in, you had to kill without mercy, no matter if they were man or woman. Your life could end at any moment. That terror was with you every second of the day. The only way to forget the terror was to give yourself over to the madness and become one of the killers. That was war. That was Suzuha's life. I had been in many nightmarish world lines, but none of them were that bad. My dad's work on the time machine got him branded as a rebel. Dara had made the time machine that brought Suzuha here. It was far more powerful than the one that existed in the Alpha world line. I left the military to join him and his group. The police and the peacekeeping squads came after me. The battles after that were worse, and there were a lot of them. I don't want to use the phrase, fighting for the good fight, or fighting the good fight. I killed a lot of people, and lost many friends and comrades. One of them was my mother. Dara was still staring at the computer screen, but I could see him twitch. He must have been listening to Suzuha while he pretended to look at the screen. She tried to protect me from one of those, from one of the army drones. She was gunned down. <laughs> this is the first time I'd heard how Yuki Amane died. She was in the next room, right now, having fun in the shower. <laughs> and that was how she was going to die. Who takes showers together? I know this is a serious moment, but... I saw her ripped apart with my own eyes. Her warm blood splattered all over me. I know what happened in the first one, but... Maybe the reason Suzuha didn't want to talk to her mother in 2010 was that she didn't want her asking about the future. There was no way Suzuha could tell her that. Listen. Uncle Okunin. At some point, Suzuha's eyes started to overflow with tears. This world can only go to one place. Hell. It doesn't have to be right now. There's still a little time, but I think. So, just think about it again. Please. Please. I knew it. In my mind, I, I knew it. The right thing to do w was to do as she's asked. But... The sensation I felt when I slipped the knife into her flesh and took the life of the girl I loved. It went from my hand to my arm and then to the rest of my body and I started shaking. My vision blurred then almost went black. My hands went to my mouth. There was a wave of pain like my stomach was turning inside. Er, inside out. Uncle? Are you okay, Okarin? Yeah. Sorry. 
Suza poured me a cup of water and I gulped it down. Sorry. It was too early to talk about this. No. It's not. I'm fine. I sank into the sofa and tried to calm down. I know what you want to say and how you feel. But I've gone through so many world lines. I've seen people in other world lines have their fates toyed with by the time she Look straight into Suzuha's eyes. I've seen your own tragic end. And I've realized that I'm powerless to do anything. Humanity was powerless before the laws of this world. Using the time machine to change world lines means breaking the rules of the universe. It's not the province of humanity. You could say it's the province of God. If we try, we'll suffer an even more horrible punishment. That's what I think. Is that your answer? Uncle Okurin? For now. If nothing else. I see. Feel free to tell me I'm just running away. No. I won't do that. Suza looked up at the ceiling inside. That must have been a habit she picked up lately. And now, our next top story. The Ministry of Health announced that there have been no reported cases in Japan of the new form of encephalitis that is ravaging America. Encephalitis. But this new virus um, has a long incubation period, and they cannot deny the possibility that it has already arrived in Japan. The ministry has ordered all medical organizations in the country to draw up treatment plans to investigate the virus's spread. We're here with Soko Harumi. Nope. Medical University. So, Mr. Hariyama san, what sort of symptoms does this new encephalitis cause? The new virus does not spread easily, but it has a long incubation period and appears without warning. The main system, symptoms are hallucinations and memory problems. For example, you think you are at work, and suddenly you find yourself at home, or Huh. Because they were hitting on... Okay, so the reason why this is interesting is because in the first one, they were hitting on some points where um, everybody remembers the time leaps. It's not just me. It's just I have a stronger one than everybody else. So when I was time leaping all that time and I was messing with things, everybody remembers every previous world line that I went to. And the world line reconstructs itself to like match whatever world line I'm in. So the argument is that everybody remembers... Um, everything and so if that's a thing exactly so you might have memories of events that never occurred um, and you won't, you won't know where they came from uh, and so if everybody everybody in the world has those memories that's very interesting and so this brings me to the point I was going to bring up earlier in the in the episode is that what happens So here's my thing it's like what what happens if since since if we're if our argument is that Amadeus is actually Kudasu wouldn't she remember the previous Kudasu Assuming that she is a perfect reimagination. 
Does that make sense? That makes sense, right? I don't know, we'll see. You could describe it similar to deja vu, or even the feeling you get when you're only half awake, but the symptoms are far more pronounced than that. Because Kudasu is actually Kudasu. And so she'd remember all the previous world lines. Or like other forms of encephal encephalitis, we know that proper treatment and full recovery is possible. So even if we do see some cases in Japan, it's not a matter, matter for serious concern. The reporter was still talking, but I couldn't hear what she was saying. The information I just heard was that shocking. Yeah. And you're kind of encephalitis? I knew the symptoms she was describing. Losing the ability to discriminate or dis yeah, discriminate between dreams and reality? Losing your sense of passage of time? Your memories no longer match those of people around you? That that was that was exactly the same as reading Steiner. So Oh. I'm old Suzaha? I'm not new Suzaha, I'm old Suzaha. 1975, 813. This is old Suzaha from back in the day. From back from Steins Gate 1. Oh, we're gonna find out what happened to Kagari. Oh, Kagari, calm down. The interior of the time machine smelled like metal and was covered in instruments of different sizes. The girl inside was sobbing. It had been almost an hour since Suzuhel had left to go look around. She'd assumed that Kagari would have stopped crying by now, but she had no such luck. How long are you going to keep crying? You need to get it together. Think about how Big Sis, May Big Sis Mayu felt. Kagari Shino looked up at Suzuha, her face wet with tears. Mommy? So don't cry. It's annoying. But... Suzuha walked over to Kagari and knelt down so they'd be at eye level. She had no intention of spoiling her. Her goal was to save billions of lives, and this was her first mission. Listen, from now on I'm treating you as a member of Valkyrie. You work for me, and you're not a civilian. This is the year 1975. Nobody we know is alive here. Dad and Big Sis Mayu haven't been born yet. In other words, there's no one here to protect us. The only one who can protect you is yourself. Got it? Yeah. Kagari was a brave girl. She'd finally realized that now wasn't the time for tears. She tried to stop crying, but it wasn't working well. But it was a lot of a lot better than for her emotions than sobbing. She was a smart girl. Suzuha knew that. There's not a lot of time. If someone from this era finds the time machine, it'll cause a big commotion. The time machine had landed on the roof of the radio building, which wasn't a spot that people visited often. The chances of anyone finding it were slim. But in this era, they had no one to help conceal it, which means they couldn't stay long. She needed to find or finish her mission quickly and move to the next time period. If something goes wrong, can't we just use the time machine to come back? There's not enough fuel. We can't jump an infinite number of times. It won't work when it really counts. If it won't work when it really counts, then this is all for nothing. I see. Can you stand up? Suzu stepped out of the time machine and beckoned to Kagari. <laughs> Kagari looked surprised. Her eyes were narrowed at the bright sunlight. The sky above Tokyo in this time period was too dirty to be called blue. Smoke and dust clouds filled with you know you knew what were rising from the, the rows of smokestacks. 
It all combined with the black exhaust from the cars that scurried along the ground to create a smog so thick you could literally see it. The sky above the city was covered by a veil of death. But still, it was the first clear sky that Kagari had ever seen. She'd only ever known from books and videos that the sky could be this bright. Nuclear weapons used during the Third World War had changed the weather over Tokyo, and the sky was constantly covered in dull gray clouds. The sun's light was always weak and it shone through them, but it was never this bright. When I was a kid, the sky was still like this. I didn't remember much, or I don't remember much, but I remember a little. Suzo looked up at the sky too. The air is so clean. I think that meant the air is so delicious. Oishi? Oishi means delicious, right? In 2036, you need a filter and a mask to go outside for any length of time. Compared to that, 1975 was a lot cleaner. Now you understand why everyone was willing to risk it all to change the world line, right, Kagari? The world lines. History. You can worry about that stuff later. For now, just focus on protecting the sky. Kagari slipped her hand into her pocket and took out the faded green Opa keychain. She stared at it with a sad look on her face. She was probably thinking about Maori, her mother. And she was probably trying to understand what it meant that her mother had put her in the time machine. Suzu decided that Kagari was all right now and closed the hatch on the time machine from the outside. The lock flipped on automatically. The only person who could open it now was Suzuha, whose biometrics had been loaded into the system ahead of time. If someone did find the time machine, it'd be a while before they found out what it was. Kagari, look at this. It's an IBN 5100. Suzuha handed her a printout of a photo. What is this? It's a retro PC called the IBN 5100. None of the ones in our time still work, but here, we should be able to find a working one. My first mission, and yours, is to split up and find it. Yeah. We can communicate with this. She handed Kagari a small transceiver. I was told it doesn't have a very long range, so don't expect too much from it. Uh, okie dokie. I don't know if they think that's a cool thing to say. We'll meet up in front of this building every 90 minutes for a status report. Got it? Okie dokie, yes. Good answer. Suzuha nodded and patted Kagari on the head. Okay, let's get started. Suzuha was on the top of the radio building in 2010, looking down. 35 years, huh? That's how long ago it had been in real time since she'd spoken to Kagari here. From her sp perspective, it had only been a few months. The view from up here had changed quite a lot since then, and in the next 26 years it would change even more. She'd seen for herself how this building changed over a span of 61 years. The thought didn't make her feel sentimental. Instead, she felt the loneliness and fear that comes from having a past not shared with anyone else. Using the time machine to change the world lines means breaking the rules of the universe. Rintaro Okabe's words flashed through her mind. Still, 
lately. She'd been thinking more about Cogdy. She'd only been searching the city at regular intervals. She was looking for Cogdy Sheena. She didn't even know if she was in Tokyo. She had no clues. She didn't even know what Kagami looked like now. So maybe it was a waste of time. Even so, she had to find Kagami herself. But she hadn't any better luck today. She turned around and looked towards the time machine. She would come here every day. The primary reason for coming here was to see if her father, Itteru Hashida, had been there. Anytime she let her guard down, he would try to he would come try to examine it. She told him it was it would cause a time paradox, but he didn't listen. She needed to keep constant watch. To be honest, she had a lot of things she had to do. And then she heard the metal door to the roof open. Was it her dad? She squinted into the darkness, but the person she saw was much smaller than it to do, and had cat ears coming out of their head. There you are. Suzunyan, good, good evening. Oh, reading Ferris, man. Oh, it's you, big sis, Rumi. Ferris Nyan Nyan had a spring in her step as she approached Suzuha. Who's Rumi? I'm Ferris, yeah? Your big sis Rumi. Ferris's real name was Rumi Ho- They're really trying to bring people in. I would just figure they'd continue with that, you know? But I, I'd smart to, to do this. She was Dari's friend and had helped them in many different ways back in 2036. So Susa had known her ever since she was very young and always called her Big Sis Rumi. For whatever reason, in this era, she always wanted to be called Ferris, though. When Susa had asked why, she simply responded, Ferris is Ferris, yeah? Which, an answer which meant nothing to Susa. Nobody was in the lab, so I thought you might be here. I guess I was right. Here, I brought you a snack. It's leftovers, though. Fair showed off, or showed her cake box with the logo from Maid's, the Maid Cafe where she worked, May Queen Nine Squared. I'm glad Dad wasn't at the lab. If he ate something like that at this hour, he'd get even fatter. It's not for Dadunyan, it's for you. For me? Why? <laughs> you know you love it. Ferris grinned and nudged Shizuha in the side with her elbow. Uh, I don't. There's an apple tart, a Mont Blanc, and Nyand. Oh my goodness, don't say Nyand. Nyand a piece of strawberry shortcake too. Uh. See, doesn't it look good, Nya? Ferris opened up the box and showed her what was inside. Susan could smell the sweet cream and fruit. Come on, eat up. Don't worry about a thing, Nya. <laughs> Open wide. I'll feed it right into your cute little meow. I'll put it in the fridge for tomorrow. <laughs> nah, you're, you're, you're such a stoic Suzunyan. Ferris laughed and handed over the box. They expire tomorrow, so make sure you eat them up before they do. Yeah. D thanks. Me oh, please, Susan, or freaking Ferris, I swear. Me, you're welcome. It's like they they tried to find out how many ways they could put Nya into a freaking sentence. Ferris gave her mischievous wink and looked up at the time machine beside them. How's Darunyan's time machine research going? 
He's working hard, I guess. Big sis Rumi, is it okay to leave this time machine here? Suzu looked around the roof as she asked. It was solely the th thanks to Ferris that no one had really noticed the massive object on the roof. She was the heir to a rich family that a lot, had a lot of influence in this area, and had contributed to a lot of the development in Akibara. She was going to help hide the time machine. Yep, I vented out this whole floor, or roof, I guess. It's fine, yeah? I told the owner that we're developing a VR game. It's not the best excuse in the world, but it works. How new is this game? Gotta be like, what, 2015, 2016? For VR? It's a huge album. Don't worry about it. I'm always ready to help you save the world's elementals from... What? Four elementals. Oh, yeah. The winged interstellar creatures that appear in Cthulhu mythos. Got it. So, so. R right. I forgot that she's also a Chunibyo, like, like uh, Okabe used to be. Since many years ago, well, I guess many years in the future, I've been wondering. But sometimes you say what you say is really hard to understand. What language is that? Don't think, Nya. Yeah. Feel. Oh, come on. Uh, it's so cold. I think I'm going home, Nya. Yeah. In the end, she never could get an answer. To Suzuha, Ferris was always a great mystery. I'll walk you home. Let's go together. Yeah, then you can have dinner at my place, too. That wasn't what I meant. You never eat any real food, do you? Whenever I see how stoic you are, I always feel like I have to do something, yeah. Like a protective or motherly feeling, it stirs something like that within me. I'm just fine. Before she finished her sentence, she felt someone looking at her. She glanced around. Yeah. What is it? She listened carefully. She definitely heard a very faint sound from the direction of the metal door that led to the stairs. It was small enough that only Suzuha, or that Suzuha was only able to notice it because of her training. Someone's there. They probably heard us. Most of the discussion was worthless, but they talked about the time machine a little. If someone heard that. <laughs> Susan had yanked her gun out of her jacket and in an instant ran towards the stairs as fast as she could. She heard someone running down the stairs as soon as she did. The sound. Heavy military boots in a wide stride. They got farther and farther away. They're fast. She opened up the door and stumbled onto the landing. Then she raced downstairs, skipping three steps with every stride. But still, it wasn't fast enough. Suzuha was born fast, and she'd trained to be faster, but it wasn't enough. When she finally made it to the second floor, she could hear the loud revving of her- Oh, shit. She panicked and slipped on an object that had been left halfway up the stairs, and then rolled her way to the bottom. She managed to get in the right position and protect her head so that her hips- So it was her hips that stuck to ground. She forced herself to stand up and run outside. It's what's her name, isn't it? She could see the trail of the taillights of a large motorcycle speeding away. The driver was wearing a black helmet and a riding suit, and already a good distance away, so she couldn't even tell if they were a man or woman. They revved their engine loudly as if to mock her, and then spun the corner onto Center Street. 
damn. Well, that puts a wrench in things. <laughs> that, uh, that puts a wrench in things. That was Ferris done. Oh, yeah, a little later, Ferris caught up. Huh. Are you okay, Nya? They got away. She put that away, Nya. Oh. She put the gun in her hands back in her jacket holster and brushed away her hair that had. that. brushed away hair that sweat had stuck to her brow. Who was that, Nya? I don't know. But they weren't a civilian. They've been trained. Alright, so I'm gonna have to end it here because this already takes long enough to upload as it is. Um Damn, so the rounders are after us now. The rounders were only after us because we had a time machine. Now that we have a time machine, now that they they know about the time machine, freaking what's her name is now gonna be on our shit again. Um what's her name? Phone girl. girl. Girl that's not good at talking, but likes her phone a lot. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I definitely know her name. Anyway, I gotta end it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this episode, I can't stress enough to leave that like button. That uh, really helps me out, um, both video and channel-wise. And uh, if you like what you see here, freaking consider subscribing. I upload a lot of visual novel stuff, as well as some roguelike stuff so if you're interested i know it's a weird combination go ahead and subscribe and uh see you guys in the next episode whatever it may be peace out you guys